Hello, I'm Runia, aka Media Adaptation, and welcome back to Moderation while I'm for a game. And it's Friday. That means it's time once again to talk about the supposedly lost 80s anime, Go for a Punch, aka Saki Sanabashi. And over the past week, the Discord looked into the leads about the adaptation of the manga Brain Damage. But all leads have turned up nothing. Several of our viewers have also followed suit and put in some hard work, but also found similar results. It doesn't help that said anime came out years before the manga, which itself is not impossible. Uh, Tichi Muyo and I think uh, La Petite Corset, I believe were both animes first. But unless something new develops, we can safely rule that one out. Most of the other searchers are going along at a snail's pace, but we did have someone who asked if there was any uh, correlation between these two pictures, because they were both found in the search results for Saki which turns out to be Saki Saki Kotaro, uh, the manga version of Kiyosami High School, with our pink haired girl being the one in question. So, sadly, no correlation. Over on the Reddit, we got a bunch of posts, and most of them posing what-if questions. One user who goes by the name of Cautious at Cheese has put in some solid research into the subject, so let's look into a few of his findings. The first one is Ogre Slayer from 1995. There was once a hybrid of an ogre and a human. The child has no name, but carried a magic sword called Onikiri Maru, the Ogre Slayer, which he took the name for himself. It is believed that if he kills all the other ogres, then he could finally become fully human. We start off with the flashback sequence of a girl being chased by one of them, and her guy steps in. But it might be too late, as she's already been affected which could reveal itself in three years. So flash forward to that time period, and she does have the curse which manifests in stopping anything bad from happening to her. It's not because they like her, it's more of a way to protect itself. One of the girls in schools knows something's up, and tries to prove it by pushing a window at her, which shatters and doesn't affect her at all, but her friend gets badly hurt. So she then has a small Akira moment before trying to confront her, and it turns out that a lot of people got hurt from several different events involving collateral damage. So they try and kill her. Okay, this is where her powers fully awaken. So why don't you all try and guess how this is going to happen? A. Is she going to continue her Akira moment and go mob psycho on their butts? Or B. Will she herself become a demon and extract her revenge? Or C. Brainwash the group into killing themselves? All those answers would be completely acceptable because they are well thought out solutions. But again, this is an anime from the 90s, so thought and logic means very little in the grand scheme of things. You remember a while back where we had a girl who took an energy ball up to snatch? Yeah, picture that in reverse. And the death toll just skyrockets from here. By the time my guy gets there, the ogres have already been reabsorbed back into her. And then she starts getting a bit drunk off the power. And when a biker gang starts harassing her, that means they have to die as well. Our friend comes back, but sadly becomes a casualty in the event. Our guy tries to kill them, but their healing factor is something that puts Deadpools to shame. So our girl decides to kill herself to stop them once for all, and the episode ends on a very somber note. There are other parts of the second one being uh, involving memory loss and a demon that got sealed away, but it's far less over the top than the first one was. The user also goes off to list several other animes, like Adventure Kids and Nightmare Campus, as well as a girl game from 2012 called Splatter School, which can get pretty intense. I only found this guy's post the other day, so sadly I couldn't look into all the subjects. He also lists a couple of classic ones that we've already been over before, like Overfiend and Pet Shop of Horrors. Some of our other viewers have brought up the suggestions that it sounds similar to an old anime that deals with natural disasters where the premise of three girls getting trapped in a bathroom due to a landslide. Part of the story is supposed to deal with a male character trying to dig them out, but since it took so long, the girls decided to kill themselves. I've looked into a few of these of this topic, 
but I haven't found one of them that went this extreme route before. But it is something to look into for a future video. And as for adult films from 1984, the next on the list is one from December 20th called Milk Doll. And it's a coming of age story set around World War I. And it's normal for the most part, except for this weird mental breakdown about partway through the film, where she's come to terms with her own sexuality, but it involves her in a room full of a bunch of creepy naked dolls. Which I can't show you because YouTube. I know it's supposed to symbolize her not wanting to be viewed as an object, but it's one of those moments that make you feel like the writer went off their meds. Which again, is very par from the course of this show. And again, sorry that we don't have so few topics this time because IRL right now is kind of a bitch. And since finishing up our torrent last week, we've gotten suggestions to talk about other mangas that our viewers have put some research into. Like Metamorphosis from 2016, which features a suicide scene in the bathroom and some similar imagery, as well as our main character named Saki. I only know of this one by reputation, and it's supposed to be its own little clusterfuck that probably needs its own video to cover. So if you guys want to ask that one, we could probably cover that for one of our requests or something. Also, there's another one called Dukomashi from 2013, which has a very similar idea, but with multiple people from different backgrounds being trapped in the school, with no way out. So it also received a movie adaptation in 2016, so it's something we could do for a Thursday video. Feels a lot like uh, Werewolf Games, which we covered the entire series before, and apparently there's a new one coming out this year, so I can't wait for it. And again, sorry for this video being up shorter, but with how the world is right now, it's really hard to get all of our videos done on time. I hope you guys understand. And that about does it for this video. If you have any other ideas like seeing made to a video, then please post it down in the comments below, and we'll add it to our next viewer request week. It's now time for the part of the show, where we ask you to help us appease the YouTube algorithm by dropping a like, share, or comment. It helps out much more than you'd think. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then it's very much appreciated. And if you'd like to support this channel, then please visit our Patreon. Link will be down in the description below. Even if you can't give a lot, every little bit helps. Oh, we also started up a Let's Play channel. So if you want to see us try out some horror games, then feel free to stop on by. Link will be in the card as well as in the description. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. Anyway, I'm Runya. And I'm Ada. Remind you to take life in moderation. Weep not for children, for life is this way. Murdering beauty and passion. Hush now, dear children, it must be this way.